Our first reading this morning is from uh, Proverbs chapter 9, uh, verses 1 to 10, found on page 517 of your Q Bible. Proverbs 9, 1 to 10. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants and the calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way, way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. Do not rebuke mockers or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise and they will love you. Instruct the wise and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Here ends the reading. Thank you, God. Our second reading this morning is from the 34th Psalm, 34th Psalm, verses 9 to 22, found on page 447 in your Pew Bible. Actually, I see the song based on verses start in verse 12. Okay, the psalm is Psalm 34, starting in verse 12. I will read the even if the congregation is responding to God. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from time and rise. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers them. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. He will save the wicked, but those of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Pray be to God. Our second reading this morning is from the fifth chapter of Ephesians. Reading verses 6 to 21, found on page 949 of the Pew Bible, Ephesians 5, beginning at verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such thing, things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. That is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful in how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's, Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be to God. God.
gospel this morning comes to us from John in the sixth chapter. We're beginning in John chapter 6, uh, verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give you for the life of the world, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so no one who feeds on me, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate man and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He said this while he was teaching in the synagogue and confirmed. On hearing this, many of his disciples said, This is hard teaching. Who can accept it? Whether well, his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, does, that, does this offend you? Why did you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe. Who would betray him? He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. From this time, many at this time, from this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter, Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. This is the word of our Lord. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, I said last week that we would see man holding even harder to their own opinions this week. And you know what? I wasn't lying a bit. Jesus made a statement that caused them to have, to have to make a decision. To believe in him or not. So because they either didn't understand or just didn't want to understand, many walked away. Verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Now, even today, this statement can cause a bit of squeamish, squeamishness, can it? I mean, admit it. To say we're eating the flesh of something, it's not common talk. But is this a re uh, reference to our communion meal that we're going to have? Absolutely. Is it a reference to cannibalism? By no means. See, that's where it takes understanding to know what this is all about. To know what Jesus said. So first off, let's look at who Jesus is. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man, right? He's the total package. What he existed to be was exactly what he was. A perfect teacher, a perfect savior, a perfect God in a human body. Matthew Henry's Bible commentary 
they call it concise because basically concise means that you put a whole lot of information into a little spot. But I'm actually going to shorten it up just a little bit more. He puts it this way. The flesh and blood of the Son of Man denote the Redeemer in the nature of man. With all the precious benefits of redemption, the pardon of sin, acceptance with God, the way to the throne of grace, the promises of the covenant, and eternal life present in him. These are called the flesh and blood of Christ because that is who he is. They are in turn given to us by the breaking of his body and the shedding of his blood. They are the meat and drink to our souls. Eating his, this flesh and drinking his blood means believing in Jesus Christ and his redemption. Meditating upon the cross of Christ gives life to our repentance. Love and gratitude. We live by him as our bodies live by our food. And the reference. So in other words, we live by him because when he lives in us, we shall truly live. We live by the nourishment of his being, his body and blood. He passes it all to us. His holiness, his acceptance into heaven, his grace, all of his sacrifice of his body on the cross for us. When we say we're eating his body and drinking his blood, we are fully bringing him, his being, into our being forever. That's why it's called communion. It's the intimate sharing between Jesus Christ and us. Him giving his all and us accepting him. It truly gives understanding to what it means to be one with our Savior. It's truly a God-given thing to understand how special this meal is. As I always say, when you take that meal and you walk away, you feel, you feel that in you. That's Jesus Christ in us. That's his being in our being. That's why he gave us a meal. And as I said before, I just a tap on the back. Now again, we know these things because we read the Word of God. We have our Bibles. We have the greatest chance to understand that has ever been had. Do you ever think about that? Our generation has the biggest chance to understand what God said of any generation that's ever lived. Our Bibles are translated into all languages. It's easy to get in our country with the mass production of printing. But I say most because there are still places where man holds his opinion over God's. The Bible is still a deal. They don't want the masses to know Jesus. So to keep them from understanding his word, they keep it from them. They keep it quiet. And they won't let people know about Jesus. And when you think about it, it's such a terrible thought to have people not know about Jesus because of another man saying, no, we're not going to let you. But as we read our scripture this morning, we see some of Jesus' disciples that were with him, that had trouble understanding and accepting his words. Now remember, a disciple is a follower. These people had taken the steps to believe. They were following Jesus, they were listening. But the fail, not the fall, the fall took place decades earlier, centuries earlier. This is the fail of mankind that still goes on. 
verses 60 through 65, on hearing it, many of his disciples said, this is hard teaching. Who can accept it? Verse 61, where the disciples were grumbling about this. Now again, did you catch this? Do you see how Jesus had a deal with people grumbling about his words right there in front of him? Right there in front of the one doing the teaching, they're telling him, oh, I don't know about you. You're, yeah, this is just all that. Our opinions are much stronger than your words. So Jesus says to him, does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known at the beginning that which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. Here again, we have that controversial thing about the Father enabling somebody. But the truth of that is, is the Father wants to enable all of us through the teachings, through his word. God never hides his word from anybody. He enables all of us to know. But as I've said a million times, it's up to us to accept it. Those that will not understand because of their hardened hearts. Those who don't want to understand the truth. But some pretend, as they do, with a false piety and a false faith. They'll be known by God. They will be known in the end. And they'll answer for their ways. That's why I've been talking about understanding so much the last few weeks. When we look at Jesus' question. Were the people going to handle the fact that Jesus is going to ascend to heaven? Or would they say, well, oh, no, that's impossible. We might have seen it, but we don't agree that that's not in our thinking. We, no, we don't, we don't want that. See, that was the reason Jesus asked them that question. Because that exact thing was going to happen. He was going to ascend. And he wanted them to open their minds now. So when the glory of faith happened right before them, they would be ready. They would understand. They would understand before it was too late. Well, unfortunately, we see what happens when man's heart is so hard that he won't change. When his neck is so stiff that he will not look up to God. When we're so set on looking where we're looking that we will never look up. Verse 66. Verse 66. From that time on, many of the disciples turned back and no longer followed him. There it is. Do you see that anywhere around you? The biggest breakdown in Christian faith? People leaving their faith because they, they don't understand or they just don't want to understand? They follow their own ideas and say, God, I don't need you. I don't need this faith thing because this is what I have for faith. We have 12 disciples left. We have 12 followers left. Now, we don't know the exact number that were there, but you know, as we read in the Bible, it talks about the crowds that followed him. So we could very safely say there was probably 50s or 100s that were following him. 
And they all left but 12. Do you see a resemblance anywhere close to our numbers in our real world today? In our churches? A few believers holding on while the 50s and the 100s walked away and said, I don't need that. I don't need faith. When you think about it, it all happens over and over again. When our society says, well, that, that teaching the Bible, that's just all, that's prejudice and hard, hard-headed and stiff-necked and we want to live our lives our way. We don't have to follow that. Do you see it? It happened again. But Jesus, as I said many times, he has that way about him. Right there, the average human would have went, fine, I'm out of here. But Jesus turns to the twelve, the few that stayed. He says to him in verse 67, you do not want to leave me too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. What a simple confession there. That's where we are. And that's I hope that's where we are. Following Jesus Christ for who he is. Understanding what the disciples understood. That Jesus Christ is the Holy One of God. Not to be part of the world, not to be part of the crowd. Not to follow the fad but to be true believers. I'll let you in on something which you might not really understand. Here at Living Word, we're not going to follow the crowds. I hope you're okay with that. We're not going to change our beliefs to be in the world. We're going to believe in Jesus Christ for who He is. We're going to learn and understand His words. And if we run into areas where we are confused, we're going to get together and we're going to talk about it and figure it out through God's word and God's way. So that we can say that we truly understand what faith is about. We can say we know the real truth. No. It's amazing, heartbreaking, eye-opening, whatever you want to call it, to read what happens. And if we understand the absolute mirror image of what we live through, we can be okay. Because we read the rest of the Bible. And we read where believers will be saved in the end. And those that followed everybody but Jesus, well, as I said last week, I don't know where they go, and I don't want to know. Because I want to be that on that path that's right now. So don't let the skirmish in the world bother you. Don't let the, don't let the confusion, don't let the, the comments or the opinions ever, ever bother you. Because Jesus Christ's word has never changed, no matter what the world said. It just takes strong believers to say he's strong. Oh, let's pray. Oh, dear Jesus, I, I truly marvel as I look at the stories. If the whole world were to follow those disciples that quit being disciples, if they were all left you, where would we be? But the twelve, the few stayed strong. And they made your word known throughout the world. 
as we struggle in our world now, as they take your word out of our schools, out of our government, out of every place, just like those countries that ban the Bible. Help us to be strong Christians in this country and say, no, we want that word there. Oh, Jesus, understanding what you, what you said is always perfect. Our opinions are normally wrong. Help us to give up our, our stiff neck, hard, hard ways and just follow you. And to see how perfect this world would be. Oh, Jesus, continue to be our God and continue to guide us. We just pray this all in your your holy, holy name. Amen. Amen. Without say prayers for our people and for our world. Under Heavenly Father, all glory and might, all praise to you. Dear Heavenly Father, you are our God, you are the Creator. We come today to worship you. Not for just what you've given us, but for who you are. Under Heavenly Father, your plans are so amazing. Your thoughts are so much more than our thoughts. Help us to understand that if we just follow you, that you will lead us into a perfect eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Oh, Lord Jesus, we we read your words, we watch your ways. We can feel your disappointment, but we also see your never-ending journey and your ending plan. No matter how hard it got, you kept going forward. Lord Jesus, when you ask us to take your body and your blood, to eat your flesh and drink your blood, you're asking us to take you into us, to be part of us. Lord Jesus, help us understand that what you're asking us to do is such a glorious giving of all you have. Help us understand that you went to that cross to give us you are all. And you ask us to partake in your meal to remember you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you for your love. Continue to be our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, Holy Spirit, we, we know through our scripture that we we are to come to you with our prayer and you would take them to our Lord like incense. Holy Spirit, we come to you today with, with prayers of need, with prayers of, of condolence. Oh, uh, Heavenly Spirit, we ask you to continue to hold David up. After his surgery, but the glory of his surgery that was done by men that were taught through your spirit. We ask you to hold on and give him strength now as he, as he heals. We ask you to be with Gary and Mary and the whole family to give them strength as, as the body heals. Oh, Holy Spirit, we, we hold up Sharon. A little different situation, but we know that with her body that she is going to be with you soon. And with our faith, just as Jesus said, are you going to believe that the Spirit will raise up one day? Holy Spirit, help us to understand that yes, when she leaves us here, her Spirit is with you. 
The flesh meant nothing. The spirit is where life is. Ah, uh, Heavenly Father, I ask. Heavenly Spirit, I ask you to go into the into our Vita Cristo group and all those people that God is putting on their hearts to come and come and see. Come and enjoy, come and experience how much God can put into their lives. Holy Spirit, our meeting yesterday, we have a group that is saying, Come, let us show you how amazing this is. So I ask you to just fill the hearts of those who you put you put that word in them. Have them not say, No, that's not my plan, that's not my opinion. Have them just step forth and say, Yes, I'll do this. And finally, Lord, we ask your healing power come into our sister day as she fought a wasp or two. We don't know why they exist. Maybe they are devil's children or we're just not sure. But Lord, give her strength and healing as she, as she continues to heal from her uh, her exposure to COVID and now her exposure to wasps. <laughs> Give her strength and prayer back to us. Lord, we just ask your prayers for all those in our lives and our hearts that, that need strength and guidance. We ask with joy and confidence and peace. We just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.